Hello and welcome to part three of our video series designed to share insight into the selection, seeding, and bracketing process for the Division I Men's Basketball Championship. Today, our focus will be on seeding the field. As we hinted at the end of our second video, you will find similarities between the selection process and seeding. The obvious difference is when selecting teams, the committee is dealing with teams that may or may not be in the tournament. With seeding, the focus is exclusively on teams that have already been selected to the field or have earned their way in by winning their conference's automatic qualifier. However, procedurally, it works the same. The process starts with the committee taking all of the tournament teams, whether they are at large or AQs, and voting on the best eight teams in no particular order. This screen shows you the list of teams that are in the tournament. Some were voted in on the initial ballot, some earned their way in by winning their conference tournament, and others were voted in on the initial selection process. Regardless of how they made their way into the tournament, they are presented to the committee for a list of eight of the best teams. The process will look the same as in our previous video. All tournament teams are listed, and the committee picks the best eight in no particular order. When finished, they hit the submit button. Once all 12 votes have been submitted, the committee will see the results. The top eight vote getters will go to a rank eight cross country vote to determine the initial number one seeds. As you can see here, the top eight vote getters in alphabetical order were Duke, Gonzaga, Kentucky, Michigan, Michigan State, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. Committee members will then focus on those eight teams and rank them in order one through eight. The top four in this cross-country vote will go on to the seed list, in order, as the four number one seeds. It's important to note, this is an initial seed list, not the final product. The ballot will look like this, simply an alphabetical list of the eight schools. Each committee member will vote by clicking on the one button for his or her best team and ranking all eight schools. Once each ballot has been submitted, results are shared in order. In this example, the committee has seeded Virginia as the overall number one seed, while North Carolina, Kentucky, and Duke, in that order, are the other three number one seeds. You will also notice the other four schools are in the holding area. They include Gonzaga, Michigan, Michigan State, and Tennessee. It's important to note that this can and often does change over the course of the week and weekend, but more on that later. To begin the process of seeding the two line, the committee will ignore for now the four teams that are in holding and focus on all other tournament teams that have yet to be seeded. Again, each committee member will select its best eight teams from that group. The top four vote getters join the four in holding for a rank eight. The top four teams to come out of that vote will initially occupy spots five through eight, in other words, the four number two seeds on the overall seed list. These same steps are repeated until each tournament team is placed on the seed list. Remember though, the committee will toggle back and forth throughout selection week between selecting teams from the under consideration board for inclusion into the tournament and seeding those tournament teams. Here is the list of all tournament teams that have yet to be seeded, minus the four in holding. Each committee member selects their own top eight and hits submit. Remember, if you see a button disabled, that means that school is represented by that particular committee member, meaning that school can't be one of the eight selected by that member. On this screen, you'll see the top four teams from that vote in red. They are Houston, LSU, Purdue, and Texas Tech. They join the four from holding, Gonzaga, Michigan, Michigan State, and Tennessee for the next ranking. This next vote will determine the four number two seeds. The committee will rank these eight teams and hit the submit button. In this case, Gonzaga received the most support and falls initially at the number five spot on the overall seed list. The Zags are followed by Tennessee, Michigan State, and Michigan, and that quartet of teams are, for at least now, the number two seeds for the tournament. Remember how we said that the seed list changes over the course of the week? That's because several times over the course of the week, the committee goes through what is affectionately known as the scrubbing process. Scrubbing only takes place with teams that have already been placed on the seed list, and its purpose is to ensure the committee is completely comfortable with the order of teams. 
Remember, the seed list serves as the committee's ranking of all 68 teams in order from top to bottom. Only after the list is fully scrubbed can the bracketing process begin. Scrubbing typically concludes late Saturday night or sometimes on Sunday morning, which is why bracketing does not begin until Sunday. For a team to be scrubbed over another, it requires a simple majority vote after a motion has been made. Like with other parts of the process, an athletics director may not participate in a scrub involving his or her team. And commissioners are not allowed to vote for any of the teams in their conference. So let's examine how the scrubbing process works. The committee takes the seed list in its most recent state and starts by comparing its overall number one seed to the team occupying the second line. In this example, Virginia would be compared with North Carolina. The committee will look at various factors, such as head-to-head -head results, results versus common opponents, the quality of the team's wins and losses, and various metrics. If a committee member is so inclined, they would make a motion which would require a second. Oftentimes, there isn't a motion. If there is one, but there is no second, the motion dies, and thus, there are no changes. The committee will compare Kentucky with North Carolina, then Duke with Kentucky, and then Gonzaga with Duke, all until there is a motion and a second to make a switch. A vote is then conducted, and if a majority of eligible voters support the motion, Gonzaga would jump to the number four spot on the overall seed list, while Duke would drop to fifth. The committee will then compare Gonzaga to Kentucky. If they are content with that order, they will then compare Duke down with Tennessee, then Tennessee with Michigan State. Each time there is a motion and a second, a vote is taken to determine if the majority of the committee supports moving one team over another. In this case, Michigan State received the votes to jump Tennessee on the seed list. The next comparisons would be to look at the Spartans and Duke, as well as the Volunteers with Michigan. While it is not uncommon for a team to slide up or down multiple spots, teams can only move up or down one spot at a time. So now you know about the various resources the committee has at its disposal, and we've discussed the selection and seeding process. So what's left? It's the bracket, of course. This step gets more attention from our membership, the media, and our fans, but it's also the least understood of the entire process. We look forward to adding clarity on that process in our final video. See you then.